time for a little bit of intellectual anarchy, where we engage in extreme truth, extreme common sense, and diversity of ideas. How's everyone doing? A lot of people going crazy over some balloon. It's a, a tough situation. It's a lot tougher than people think. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, but just to let you know, there was a balloon flying up high and nobody did anything. The government didn't shoot it down. It was, it was known to be a spy balloon by China. They're directly spying on us. And they knew they were going to be found it out, and they did it on purpose. So they wanted us to find out. That's the first thing. Now we have to conclude why they wanted us to find out. I would say to know what our reaction is. And pretty much our reaction is what they're betting on, that we do nothing about it. Yes, they don't they want to see what lines they can cross before we do something. And you might think, well, we should tell them that this is that we should mark the line and say no further. But we have to know the motives of China. Is it just to look over stuff that they already know we have? They're trying to see how weak Joe Biden is, but not only that, and I don't blame the president for not doing anything, and I'm going to tell you why. Look, I believe you show strength, but we have to count the cost before we do something over a balloon. Now, we're going to have to. We're going to have to confront China, but here's the thing, and I need you to listen to this. Right now, China, because of their no more than one child policy and all the people killed and all the Chinese people aborted all their women. There is about 500 million Chinese men without an ability to have a wife, to have sex, to have children. There's not enough girls. And when you have a society where guys cannot have sex and they can't fall in love and they can't have children, you're going to have a society that is fully violent against each other, against the government. Um, they're in dire straits right now. They're in a very dangerous place. The leadership of China, there's not enough women. There's not enough women. And that society is going to be turned on its head. Unless you can start a war and kill all those men off. That would solve your problem immediately. I need you to think about that. And China might be looking for any provocation to start a war to solve that problem. I need you to listen to this. Because they don't care about their people, like Americans care about each other, about the human value, mor uh, moral high ground that we stand on, that each American is important. We might not do it. it, it we, we believe that in theory, in philosophy. It's much harder to do in practicality, but yet we believe it. And don't, and here's some two outcomes. We will win that war because we are more technically advanced and we are the most uh, ready military. We've been in war for 10 years. We, we have warriors and generals who actually have done the shit. They've done the wars. They have fought the battles. China hasn't really. And, most of the ch and all our military is volunteer. Everybody wants to be there. Everybody wants to fight. In China, they're being forced. So, so a lot of people are going to run. We're going to win that war. But we're gonna, probably going to lose about more than a million Americans to do it. And that's the reality. China 
has been emboldened by pulling out of Afghanistan, doing nothing about Russia and Ukraine, which we promised we would do. Now we're all talking like uh, we wouldn't do it. No, we made promises that we would, that we would protect them. And we didn't follow through on those promises. They got invaded and then we're like, we slowly implemented stuff to them. China is emboldened to take Taiwan. And if they take Taiwan, they take a major um, segment of our economy based on microchips. They can slow us down. Big time. They won't defeat us. We'll, we'll just pick... We will just meet the demand and chips will be more expensive and we'll manufacture them here in the U.S. But it'll take some time. It, it, it may cause an, uh, uh, a recession for two or three years. But we, we, we will get past it. But the thing is, it is uh, a plan of China to take Taiwan... And take whatever it can based upon American weakness. They've been emboldened. And not only have they been emboldened, they're looking to fix a problem of almost 500 million men. The way you, do, way you solve that problem is you start a war. You start a war. Now, we might... Um, win in numbers. See, we'll win the war in numbers. We'll devastate them. But they will throw men at the problem. They might take Taiwan. And they might lose almost 100 million men over it. And that would be a good trade for them. To get Taiwan, solve that problem of getting less of those men, um, you have no prospects of family and kill 100 million of them off and maybe another 100 million in proxy wars all around. They can kill two birds with one stone. So we got this balloon that people said we should have shot. Now you're armed with that information. Someone who is looking for a fight. Someone who is looking for a fight. See, everybody wants to stand strong until they have to start throwing fists. And the person who has nothing to lose will oblige you. And then you're like, oh shit, I got myself into something. So, I understand we have to stand against China, but... Do we really want to fight over a balloon? Look, I always said this, and this is probably unpopular, but we should have stopped Russia militarily. Just not for stopping Russia and not for Ukraine is to show China that we're not going to put up with shit because there's a real enemy. We just... Russia just exposed itself at being a second-rate military. We would have took Ukraine in about a month if we wanted to save and keep uh, civilian casualties at its lowest. If we fought, if we had Russia's uh, sentiment and we didn't care about um, citizens, uh, um, civilians, we would take that country in a week. Maybe even less than that. They are a second-rate military. And we should have beat their ass in front of China to show them that we're not going to put up with shit. To show them some strengths. Too late now. It's too late now. Now, our first engagement will be with China. Could have been with Russia. Would have been an easy fight. Now, I understand he's going to throw nukes. And, you know, all you have to tell him is, uh, we're going to throw nukes back if you want to keep this conventional. He might be crazy. There might be a risk. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we should we would we should have used them as a sparring partner, fucked their shit up, and said, look, this is just a little bit of what we would do to you if you push the issue. 
chill, sit back, and find another way to deal with this. You're not going to get Taiwan. Um, slow down your aggression. But no, we don't have that no more. So our, we're going to have, we're going to have, one of our generals just said that probably in next summer, not this summer, but next summer, uh, 2025, he's telling his troops, prepare for war with China. So this shit is serious. And we shouldn't be knee-jerk. So I don't blame the president, uh, Biden, for not, for, for not doing anything. It might be out of cowardice anyways, but doing something against Russia and doing against something against China are two totally different things. Two totally different things. Two totally different things. And we got to be smarter. We got to be smarter. We have to make... Smart moves on the chess board. I'm a, I, I gotta say this. So, hey everybody, it's James Salazar with James Salazar Media here. If I can just have a moment of your time to talk about some of my shows and some free things I have for you. First of all, on my YouTube channel, I have the Bright Burn YouTube Academy where we talk about mindsets and belief systems of what it means to be an entrepreneur. We also have the Intellectual Anarchy Show where we talk about politics, philosophy, and religion. I think they're inseparable from having a keen mind and intellect. We also have the James Salazar Media Podcast where we talk about pop culture, politics, and futurism. Some free things I have for you. I have the Bright Burn Society Facebook group. Here you gather with like-minded people on the same journey you're on, on meeting your goal, fulfilling your dreams, and um, what it means to be an entrepreneur. I also have a free handout, an ebook called How to Be Great at Everything You Do Blueprint. And also, if you want me to come speak at your event or you need some life coaching, you can find both these links in the James Salazar slash sling address or take a picture of my QR code and we'll all link you to all this stuff. So thank you for your time and have a good day. Hey everybody, it's James Salazar. So, here's the thing. We have to prepare for China to try to engage us in fights, looking for reasons to strike and have the moral high ground to do so, even though they have no moral high ground over that stupid balloon. Um, they're just, they might feel they have a moral high ground to strike down anything that flies over there if we would have done the same. So there are so many ways we can get in a fight with China. And they are looking for a fight. Don't, don't be fooled. They're looking for a fight. If they take Taiwan and they did it with no effort, they would be disappointed. I truly believe that. They want to take Taiwan and the chips and get rid of a certain amount of segment of their society. And they're going to be poking us and prodding us at every moment they can get, and they're going to see if we bite. And we should prepare for that. We should prepare for war. We should prepare to be dominant in the war and make their casualties very less. Because the only way China, communistic society, is going to be overthrown is that it's going to be, have to be done by the people. And when there's too many people who don't like you, want to see change, you go invade other lands, kill them off, take that land, replace them with more obedient people. That's the history of man. That's the history of kingdoms. So my friends, I'm going to leave it there. Please, in the show notes, tell me if how you think I'm wrong. This is James, Sines, James Salazar signing out of the Intellectual Anarchy. Have a good one.